Bonjour, everybody. I'm Joshua Orwell, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, so far, it's been almost three weeks since I've resigned from my last job as a food prep at a restaurant called Chili's. And nowadays, I work as a card attendant at Target. Now, to be honest, during my time working for Chili's from September 2015 to last month, I didn't really cook anything. All I had to do was weigh certain food items and get them ready for the cooks to serve to the guests. Now, aside from Chili's and other restaurants in the U.S., there are also great foods from other countries like India, Mexico, Italy, and of course, France. And on the topic of food from France, we'll be taking a look at a movie that takes place in France made by Pixar, which features Iron Chef Rats. Released on June 29th, 2007, the movie is Ratatouille. Now let's get cooking. A rat named Remy dreams of becoming a great French chef, despite his family's wishes and the obvious problem of being a rat in the decidedly rodent-phobic profession. When fate places Remy in the sewers of Paris, he finds himself ideally situated beneath a restaurant made famous by his culinary hero, Auguste Gusteau. Despite the apparent dangers of being an unlikely and certainly unwanted visitor in the kitchen of a fine French restaurant, Remy's passion for cooking soon sets into motion, a hilarious and exciting rat race that turns the culinary world of Paris upside down. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, while this movie is great, it has got to be, in my opinion, the most serious movie that Pixar has ever made so far. But, in order to explain why, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. Development of Ratatouille began in 2000 when Jan Pinkava wrote the original concepts of the movie. In 2005, Brad Bird, the director of The Incredibles and its upcoming sequel, was approached to direct the movie and revise the story. Bird and some of the film's crew members also visited Paris for inspiration. To create the food animation used in the film, the crew consulted chefs from both France and the U.S. Bird also interned at Thomas Keller's The French Laundry Restaurant, where Keller developed the Confit Bialdi, a dish used in the movie. As for the animation, well, it's Pixar animation, so there's nothing to complain about here. For example, Pixar did great with designing Paris. It looks really beautiful, especially at night. And I really like the looks of Gusto's restaurant and kitchen. Also, in my opinion, while the rats in this movie can be a bit cartoony sometimes, at least they don't look as disgusting as the characters describe them to be. In fact, some of the rats look a little bit like mice in a way. Plus, it's pretty interesting seeing things from their perspectives. I also like the certain foods that are featured in this movie, and hopefully, someday, if I do decide to go to Paris, I would like to give some of these foods a taste. So, that's basically all I have for Mustang Notes. So let's talk about the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Remy, is voiced by Patton Oswalt. Remy is a rat with a heightened sense of smell, enabling a talent and desire for cooking. Director Brad Bird chose Oswalt after hearing his food-related comedy routine. In my opinion, the thing I like about Remy is that he can be pretty talented 
and very brave and loyal. Next we have Remy's glutinous older brother, Emil, voiced by Peter Son. Best known from Monsters University. Emil is friendly, understanding, and is the only rat who Remy tells about his cooking, TV watching, and reading talents. He never tells their dad due to his brotherly support to Remy, although he did carelessly tell his friends about Remy's activities inside Gusto's. Emil likes food, however, he often swallows food whole and to Remy's disappointment, doesn't savor the flavors. Next we have Remy and Emil's father, Django, the leader of the rats, voiced by Brian Dennehy, who has been in everyone's hero. Django doesn't understand Remy's pickiness until he gives Remy a job of sniffing for rat poison after finding a poisonous apple core. Django is also against Remy's relationship to humans. One part of the movie that was pretty dark was when Django shows Remy an extermination shop with dead rats hanging on a bar. That almost makes me think of a secret of Nim, in my opinion. However, Jango does become a better father when he and the other rats help Remy cook and catch the health inspector. Next we have our human protagonist, Alfredo Linguini, voiced by Lou Romano, who previously voiced Bernie Kropp in The Incredibles. In the beginning of the movie, Linguini is a very unsure and clumsy individual. He mentions that he has never had anyone expect anything from him before, and has lost many jobs prior to his job at Gusto's. However, Linguini is a very kind-hearted person, as shown when he wouldn't drown Remy after looking into his eyes. However, he did hold some distrust in Remy in some parts of the movie. I also like the parts when Remy is trying to help Linguini cook by using him like a marionette. It's also pretty shocking that Linguini is the son of Auguste Gusteau, considering the fact that Linguini is a poor cook, but he does make a great waiter at the end of the movie. Next we come to Linguini's love interest, Colette, voiced by Jenny Garofalo whom I know from Kiki's Delivery Service and The Avengers of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Colette is Gusto's rotisseur, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and she's inspired by French chef Helene de Rose. Anyway, Colette is a very tough, assertive woman who is very hardworking. She is very fierce and strong and immediately strikes knives into Linguini's sleeves as she tells him that she won't let a new trainee screw up all her hard work. However, the scenes where Colette trains Linguini is very interesting, and despite some of her tougher qualities, she's a very firm fan and believer in Gusto and his famous quote, Anyone Can Cook. She has also memorized all of his recipes by heart. Next we have Chef Skinner, voiced by Ian Holm, who has been in the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit trilogies, and of course The Day After Tomorrow. Skinner is a diminutive chef and owner of Gusto's Restaurant. Since Gusto's death, Skinner has used the Gusto name to market a line of cheap microwavable meals. Skinner's behavior, diminutive size, and body language are loosely based on Louis 
the fun is. <sighs> anyway, in my eyes, Skinner is a very mean-spirited guy. Like, during a few scenes where he threatens Linguini. Next we come to Auguste Gusteau, voiced by Brad Garrett. Who has been in Jetsons the Movie, Casper, The Country Bears, Hoodwing 2, Tangled, as well as A Bug's Life and Finding Nemo. Many reviewers believe that Gusto is inspired by real life chef Bernard Luiso, who committed suicide after media speculation that his flagship restaurant, Le Cote d'Or, was going to be downgraded from three stars to two. Fun fact, Le Cote d'Or was one of the restaurants visited by Brad Bird and others in France. In my opinion, Gusto is the best character in the movie. While he does appear as a figment of Remy's imagination in many different forms, like illustrations, pictures, advertisements, neon signs, and spirits, I think. Gusto is an extremely talented chef. Plus, his speeches on his cooking show are very inspirational and passionate. Especially when he talks to Remy. Also, I think his catchphrase, anyone can cook, is a great one. Because... I believe that anyone can cook if they put their minds to it. Lastly, we have Anton Ego, a restaurant critic voiced by the late Peter O'Toole, who has been in the Nutcracker Prince from 1990, Stardust, and The Christmas Cottage. Now, I can't really consider Ego as the antagonist, but he is a very serious businessman, and he can be tough and intimidating at times. Plus, the scene where Ego thinks back to his mother's cooking almost makes me think of a time when my mom would reenact the ending of Green Eggs and Ham whenever I tried a new food. Plus, Ego's appearance was modeled after Louis Jovet. Hold on, pronouncing that right. I mean, yeah, I know, my French sucks. Anyway, the rest of the cooks in Gusto's kitchen are voiced by Will Arnett, Julius Callahan, James Remar, Tony Facile, and of course, Pixar's good luck charm, John Ratzenberger. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Ratatouille is a great Pixar film. The animation is beautiful and does great with capturing Paris. The characters like Remy, Linguini, and Colette are memorable. Other characters like Emile and Gusteau are great too. Plus, this movie could be a great inspiration for folks who want to cook up something special for dinner. However, there are some parts of the movie that can be pretty serious for younger audiences, but I think they can handle sitting through something like this. As for my rating, I give this movie a 97% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Be sure to join me again next weekend for my next blog. Mustang Power. Oh, and to all my French watchers out there, Adieu! Talk.